Principles of security. Now, do you know what that is? Do you follow it? Do you... Have you thought about it? So, I'm gonna... I'm gonna make you think about it in this video and talk about some of the principles that is shown here on the page. I'm gonna try hacking room. And I just wanna say that this is just one room, okay? So there are a hundred different web pages, you know, talking about principles of security, different kind of models and so on. So I really just wanna make sure that you got the idea that what you see here is a start but you are no security officer, something like that, when you master these five tasks. So, this is just an introduction. Um, this is also a free room, by the way, so you do not need to be subscribed to uh, try hacking. Let me just give you the all introduction. Now, the introduction is gonna, let's take the, the, the measures, frameworks, and protocols discussed throughout the room will play a small part in the defense in depth. So, Defense in Depth is a security model that, that basically, you know, I think I'm gonna show you a picture. If you're gonna go to Google and find the one here called, there we have it, Fort Knox. This is a fort and it gets close. It doesn't really matter. We, we can see it, right? So this is the fort and and basically you see so many different kind of things going on here. And in, in order to get inside the castle, you kind of need to go through different kind of perimeters and and, and inner and outer gates and, and, and moats and all the kind of things there are. Really just a layered architecture. A layered architecture of different kind of, 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 of you know, layers you go through. And that is what defense in depth is all about. Now looking at different kind of, you know, models, you can, you can see this uh, here. It's probably not the best one. This one here, for example. You have the actual device, the actual device, the software itself. Then there, there's an application on the top of that. There's a computer and the network, the physical, the policy procedures and awareness. So all these kind of things, which is also why that the outermost shell is the one that is usually conducted by humans or someone that that, 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 that can open the door or something or it, go into the physical part. And in many occasions, companies, they they do probably have a really good awareness uh, at people and, and they also have a really good physical security. But when you get through that, it's a nah, something like that, right? So let's talk about, let's talk about different principles of security. I'm going to start with the very popular one called the CA triad. Now the CA triad, they, it's a, it's a triad that, that consists of three different words called confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Why have they chosen those three security goals, right? So, you look at this, you see that the C, the I, and A, and it has nothing to do with this central intelligence agency, whatever, um, whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Let me see. CIA. It's uh, central intelligence. Yeah, yeah. It, it has nothing to do with that. It's, it's it's something you just have to mention every time you say CIA. I don't know why. Well, I do, but it's not that fun. So, the confidentiality part, I think they probably have it written down here. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it instead and make you do the room. So, the confidentiality part is where you have the unauthorized access if that is broken. So the unauthorized access is when you get access to something you shouldn't have access to. Now that could be you know, some data, something you can see. You can see my data on Facebook, for example. That is a clear confidentiality issue that is broken right there. Now, when confidentiality is not broken, it basically just means it works. You cannot see my information. So that is the easiest, e easiest way to say what is it in, in, in just in cool hard facts. If you go ahead and take the integrity part, it is now you have access to that data. Can you then modify it? Can you alter it? Can, you know, that is the thing. Can you 
can you change my data's integrity? So when that works, you cannot. <laughs> so so yeah, okay. And the availability is is like um, that's a difficult one to give an example of, I think. But things need to be available. Uh, if you do something like you, you dis, dis, uh, denial of service attack. You're not really breaking any sort of integrity or confidentiality, but you are removing the availability of an application. Well, that's a problem. That is that is what these three security goals is all about. Now, why are they so popular and everything? Now, that's a really good question because I I do see people putting on an extra A sometimes, like. Uh, accountability for example that you can be held accountable for the actions you did so but that is really not the three colors the three the triangle <laughs> the ca triad it is a basic triad to discuss the basics of security and this is utmost simple triad there is and i know we are tired of figures, you know, of, of shapes and this kind of things. But this is the way it is. Everything is 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 made as a shape at some point to make it easier for you to understand. The next part is called the principle of privilege. Now, the old text is: It is vital to administrate and correctly define the various levels of access to an information technology system individuals require. That is really true, and then they show us a broken lock. Now, there are so many ways to do that. You know, it's um, depending on the application you're on, depending on the system. Are you on a Windows system? Are you on a um, Linux system? Uh, then there are different kinds of ways to handle this kind of principle of privilege now the the easiest way to explain it is just by saying that there are different access models you can use in the old days you had something called like Belle Pedula or the Biba model you know go ahead and look that up on my youtube channel by the way I have videos about access control models go ahead and look for access control I'm gonna put a link down below with the um, access control model I'm gonna write that. There we go. <laughs> um, click on it and watch the video. It's really good. Um, then you have something called mandatory access control and discretionary access controls. Just two different ways of handling the access. And then you can talk about uh, capabilities where you get some sort of cons some, some sort of ticket that very Windows like. You get a ticket. You log on. You are locked on with this kind of you know key in a way. And the key tells what you can do to the system. So you run around with the key saying, hey, I if this is like your access key, I can do this, I can do this, I have access to this and that, you know. And there are so many ways to, to handle these kind of things. You know, when you think about it, they all need to do the same thing. You need to verify if you have access. Ta-da! <laughs> That's the key rule. And for some reason, people are really bad at that. Access is the most important part of security, I think. If you get access to something, it's really bad if you not if you shouldn't have access to it. So please try and figure out these principles of privilege really fast. And yeah, they actually do have the Bella <laughs> model here and the B, but yeah, I actually forgot that. So I'm just, uh, well, I have to talk about them. Um, the Bella model is the old military model, along with the, uh, I would say, along with the Beer model. But the Bella model is is building on um, on uh, confidentiality. It's a confidentiality model. So the model itself is built upon that you have some sort of security level where you can get access. Uh, let's say that 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 uh, the, this here says. Let's zoom in a bit. That, that Dave can read up, but Dave is confidential level. 
and Alice can't read up, but Alice is secret level, Bob is top secret, and Bob can read down, and Bob can also read confidential, of course, it is a continuous arrow down. Now, the issue with this kind of model is that, um, <laughs> that <clears throat> you need to flip the arrows. Dave can't read up. No. What about writing? Did they take that a part of the model too? Because that is where the issue is. <clears throat> they did not. So the issue here is that Dave can write up, but Dave cannot read up. So, in which world is it a good idea to have a system that you can write something up there, but you cannot read your own notes? Now, it doesn't sound good to many people, but in a military situation, this is probably what they want, like some sort of chain of command that someone had some knowledge and now they don't need it anymore, so they put it somewhere higher there and they kind of need to keep their mouths shut and let other higher ranked whatever officers handle the information. Now the Bieber model itself is just quite the opposite, it's a flipped version. It is Dave can read up and Alice cannot read down. Bieber is built upon integrity, which is also... Um, which is a uh, hundred percent integrity model because you cannot, it doesn't allow you to write down. It's a, it, 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 it just, sorry, it doesn't allow you to write up because if you're writing up, you can in theory contaminate a higher level of process, for example. Think about processes. So it's gonna be really difficult to do privilege escalation with this model if system is built upon this. Um, it got the same issues as the Bella Padula model, it's just flipped, so I'm gonna let you figure that out. But that is some models you can go ahead and use. I wouldn't necessarily say these are good models to do in a teaching environment, but more like um, you're probably gonna do some role-based access control or maybe even uh, <clears throat> you take the role even further and you talk about, you know, uh, what is it called? The, 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 you, you split roles up into access, so you, you do some access control list on roles, so you can manage different kinds of read, write, and stuff like that. It is what most websites use, but <clears throat> it also requires quite a lot of interaction with the system in order to withhold the same security level, always strict and straight. But this is something you need to go ahead and figure out and try, I guess, to, to, to get the grasp of it. Threat modeling and incident response. Now, uh, it says threat modeling is a process of reviewing, improving, and setting security protocols in place in organizations, information technology, infrastructure, and services. <coughs> yes. Um, the importance of threat modeling is just the same as the risk assessment. You need to have your threat modeling done before you do your risk assessment. If you can do it the right way, of course. When you have a threat model, now you can you can start to do different kind of risk assessment. The threat itself and the model that, that models the threats can you know be pretty big because it it could be like many different things. So you need to to do individual risk assessment on the different threats there are. A threat against the web server, a threat against the doors, a threat against whatever physical thing, and so on. So they all got different kind of risk assessments that you know you have to fill out, and and, and it's just gonna take some time. Um, there are different things here that you need to figure out. The threat intelligence, how much you know about it, and you need to figure out how 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 much you can figure out about a threat before you, before you can defend yourself against it. Also, doing some asset identification, and assets are like, what is that? Is that my iPhone? Well, yeah, it is. Is that my 
what whatever could be, what are you trying to protect in your company? Is it the the data? Is it the uh, is it the, the 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 whatever things you have the chairs? So mitigation capabilities now. I just totally saw the word pasta. I'm sorry. <laughs> pasta. <laughs> I don't know the word, but it's just process for tax discrimination of threat analysis. But pasta, I, I just don't use these kind of words because it makes me laugh. Mitigation capabilities. Very important because how would you mitigate yourself out of an actual breach or something like that? We talked about risk assessment. There are different kind of mods you can use. A stride one, don't say pasta. And... <clears throat> And I wouldn't necessarily go into it. There are there is a way for you to to do a um, um, a risk assessment like this. This is a colored one with different kind of you know colors, hence the word and and the naming I guess you can call it. So the, the way you're gonna do it is basically say that you have some sort of high risk, and a high risk is of course bad. How bad is it when you get breached, right? Okay, so if you're in a red one, you know, we're definitely gonna look at it now. If it's yellow, you probably have to look at it soon. And if it's green, you're gonna accept it. I think there was something called risk acceptance somewhere. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about it. Risk ac acceptance is the part of the it's the part of the the, 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 the the whole threat modeling and risk assessment idea that you have to accept a certain risk. Um, I guess I also heard people call it risk tolerance or something like that, but how much can you tolerate? But risk acceptance is kind of where you say, I accept this risk. I accept that I can be hacked within five hours because I cannot do it any better. But I know I can react within two hours, so eh, it's not really gonna work. So I guess I guess for this video, you know, we we kind of got through and and you know round uh, about the different principles of security presented here on Fry Hack Me. You know, I highly suggest you go ahead and read the room because it's more like information. You need to work with this in a situational school situation or whatever situation all to, to, to get it better. So until next time, just going to say have a really nice time online and in the physical world. See you again soon. Have a nice day. Bye bye.